start with a short activity that I like. <laughs> uh, I, I brought a drawing and um, I folded it in half. Can you guess what's behind the paper? The folded one, the folded paper? Triangle, what else? Yes? Number four. You have any other, other guesses? Anyone? Jen? Snail. Snail? Sail. A sail. <laughs> okay. All right. Shall we have a look? Okay. Ta <laughs> a rooster. <laughs> so many people probably might have thought it will be number four, right? Because it looks like the number four, and because there's a serial number one, two, three, we have good reason to assume that. The, the paper, behind the paper will be number four, but the reality was the rooster, right? Sometimes we kind of make this kind of mistakes. We, we have all these, uh, enough information to think, assume, ah, all right, with this information, I think uh, this will be the answer, this will be the conclusion, and we make that conclusion on a certain matter. But the reality is totally different from what we have assumed, right? Today, um, I'm going to talk about a man who made a very similar mistake. And the passage is from Matthew 25, 14, verse 14 to verse 30. It's a very long uh, verse, so I divide it into four sections, okay? But it's not a difficult passage. You all know, know it's a parable uh, of talents, okay? So, slowly we will read it together, okay? In a count of three. One, two, three. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags and to another one bat, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. The man with two bags of gold also came. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man harvesting where you have not sown, and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid, and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here's what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I haven't sown, and gather where I haven't scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I return, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has ten bags. For whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever doesn't have, even what they have will be taken from them and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. All right, it's a long story, right? right? But we, you're all familiar with this parable, right? Okay. Now, according to the passage, this, the third wicked, uh, wicked and lazy servant he had a very wrong view of the master. Okay? Now let's see what that is. Misconception of the master. Now, the third servant who only received one talent thought 
that the master is a hard man. Okay, hard man. In Hebrew, it's written ish kashe, which means a difficult man, very difficult, or a cruel, harsh man. And for what reason did the, the servant think that the master was a hard man? Why did he think like that? Because we know from the passage, he mentioned that, oh, the master is someone who harvests where he hasn't sown. And he gathers where he didn't scattered seed. So for him, for the, for the point of view of the servant, the master is like someone who doesn't make any efforts but demands a result. Okay? That's why he thinks that the master is a very harsh and cruel man. The second point, the servant thought that the master rewards for making profits and punishes for the loss. Now, because the servant thought his master was a very hard man, he was afraid. First, he had fear. The reaction was fear. And when he received one talent, of one talent, he was afraid to make investment on that. Why? Because if he made an investment and he failed, if he lose, if he lost a lot of money, then he, he believed that he would be punished by the master. That's what he thought about the master. So he hesitated. He hesitated to invest on his talents. That's what he did. Now, is it true? Is it true about the master? Okay. Let's find out from the passage the real facts about the master. Okay. Number one, he is, the master is wealthy, therefore thus he's not interested in gain or loss of the talents. It is written that he is wealthy, wealthy enough. And he already, the master already knows how to earn money, how to gain, how to gain his wealth. He knew it already because he said he was debating with the servant that if you knew that I was a hard man, then you should have put the money on deposit in the bank so that I could receive the interest. So the master already knew how to earn money. He wasn't interested for the servants to gain him a lot of wealth. He wasn't interested in that. He wasn't interested. He didn't care whether the servant made a profit or the servant made a loss. Okay? He didn't care about that because he had plenty of money. He had all the wealth. Okay? Number two, he entrusted his wealth to the servants in order to test their faithfulness. Now the reason why he gives out his money to the servant is to see, to test whether they are faithful enough to manage his wealth. Okay? The one who received five talents left five more talents. The one who received two talents also left two more prophets' talents. And they proved themselves by being faithful to them. And what did the master do? He couldn't wait to give more to them. He put, he was, he was willing to put them in, in charge of many things. He was willing to do it, to give more to those who proved to be faithful. Whereas the last one who received the one talent, he did nothing. He hesitated to invest the talent. Why? Because he feared. He had a wrong view of the master. He had a misconception of the master that he didn't do anything. Anything out He didn't do anything. Number three, he wants to share his happiness with his faithful servants. Now the intention, the purpose for the master, for giving out all the wealth, his, his wealth to the servant, is to share his happiness with his servants. Now, what does that mean? Sharing the happiness of the master? What does it mean? It seems as if the master is 
looking for a co-worker, a partner, who, is, who, who considers the master's work as of his own work. Okay? He's looking for a partner who will take pleasure in doing the work of the master as if he's doing his own work. Okay? Now, in order to share in, in the master's happiness, what do we have to do? What do you have to do? Number one, to build a love and trust relationship with the master. This is where the wickedest ser servant failed to live up to the purpose of the master. Because he didn't have a love and trust relationship with the master, what kind of relationship did he have? He feared the master. He had a wrong view of the master. He thought, oh, my master is a very hard, mean, harsh master. And he will punish if I do something wrong. If I, if I lose money, then he's going to punish me. And he didn't have this trust, intimate, love relationship with the master. So he could not he couldn't act according to the master's purpose. Okay. Number two, to consider the work of the master as my own work. Okay. Now, God's affair, it's becoming like how we do it, how we share his, how we share the happiness of the master is to take pleasure in what, what the master takes pleasure. Okay having interest in what the master has takes interest in. It's, it's identifying the work of the master to my work. That's sharing his happiness. Number three, to take pleasure being used by the master. Okay? It's taking pleasure. Okay? The third servant he, he lost his opportunity to participate in, in the happiness of the master, okay? Now, let me, let me um, share with you my story. When I was young, around like four or five years old, I remember a pastor visiting my house. Probably, I think he was an evangelist and he was sharing the gospel to a young child. And I remember him uh, introducing about God, the Son, Jesus Christ. And by the time he was talking about heaven and hell, I was so afraid because as a child, <gasps> hell, burning fire, I don't want to go there. And I was so afraid. I remember crying to my mother that I, I don't want to go to hell. So I made sure that, oh, I, I will believe in Jesus Christ. Only because I didn't want to, I didn't want to go to hell. Okay, so my my only concern was to solve that problem, to go to heaven, not go to hell. And the only way to not to go to hell was to believe in Jesus Christ. So I thought, okay, it's solved, and that's it. I don't have to think more. It's done. But was it done? At that time, I was like the the servant, the wicked ser servant. Okay, thinking that oh, all right, I'm going to I'm going to have I'm going to uh, keep this talent. I'm not going to I'm not going to make a loss of it. I'm just going to keep it well, dig it, and make a hole, dig the hole and put it, hide it in the ground. And when he comes back, I'm going to give it back to him, like the servant. My faith was like this, okay, I believe in Jesus, okay, and I will do the minimum, minimum things as a Christian is required to do. Go to church, Sunday service, sometimes do Bible studies, pray to God time to time, and I will try to be a, a good person helping other people, okay, and then I wouldn't commit a very serious crimes like murders, Okay, I'm not going to do that. So I thought, all right, this is enough. I thought, okay, if I if I if I uh, I made a boundary, and and this is what Christianity is. This is my faith, and and as long as I'm within 
within this boundary, I'm okay. I am safe and I will go to heaven. And that was it. I didn't think at that time why I didn't think that God had a purpose for my life. I didn't think about, oh, maybe there is a reason that, that God has given me a new life. I didn't think about, oh, he has a special purpose for my life. I couldn't think of that because my relationship with the Lord was based on fear, not love and trust. Like the, like the wicked servant, as a child, my faith was like that. I feared God. I had a wrong view of God. And that made me do nothing for God's sake. I didn't do anything that pleased God. Okay? God's business was God's business, and my life was my life. I am totally separated, and I didn't want God to interfere into my life. Okay? It was the same as the servant. The servant separated his, his job and the job and the work of the master. Okay? But unless, unless, unless we, we build up a new relationship of trust and love, we cannot, we cannot share in God's, the master's happiness, okay? Um, when we go to heaven, okay, God is going to ask each one of us, what have you done with a given talent? Okay, I have given you at least one talent to all of you, Talent could be many things. It could vary from your ability, your skills, or your health, your time, your relationship, or your character. It could vary up to many things. And God is going to ask you, what have you done with the talent that I have given you in the life? Have you used it? Have you made investment on that? to share in my happiness, which is to work for God's kingdom, to expand God's kingdom, okay? You are called, you are called to work as a co-worker for God's kingdom. And I have given you all the resources that you need. I gave you the talents. And what have you done with that throughout your life? God is going to ask you that question. And I hope and pray that we will, we will all have an answer to that. When God, when God asks us, I hope and pray that we could proudly answer God by saying, Lord, with the help that you have given me, with the time that you have given me, I, I, was, uh, I took pleasure in, in doing Bible studies with people. I, I invested my money to, to, uh, to talk over a coffee with a friend and I pray for that friend and I use my time and my money to, to really intercede for that person. And I've also used my money that you have given me to support the missionaries and to support um, the youth groups who are going on the short-term mission trips. I hope and pray that it could be a lot of things that you could, you could do. I hope and pray that you will be able to answer to God that I have used what you have given me for your glory and for your kingdom. Amen? Okay, let's pray.